welcome back. I hope you had a great lunch. We're going to start with our next panel, the Student Success Initiatives, Library Cards for Youth. The Student Success Initiative encourages partnerships between libraries and local school districts to give students public library cards. Public libraries have a variety of resources to help K-12 students succeed in school and beyond, including books, online databases, tutoring programs, and internet access. Libraries and schools determine the best model for student success in their community, which may include a full-service library card, sharing of student IDs and data between schools and libraries, or an e-resources card. Libraries who have these partnerships with local schools will discuss what they have learned about building and maintaining relationships with the school district and the logistics of adding these student cards. Today's uh, panel will be moderated by Tari Ryan, Youth and Outreach Manager with the Mountain View Public Library. She will be joined by Nathan Brumley, Assistant Director of the Livermore Public Library, Mary Corpora, Librarian of the Pleasanton Public Library, and Lauren Hancock, Expanded Learning Manager of the San Jose Public Library. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to give the panel a moment to speak, but I just want to talk about the fact that as libraries, we really have these three things that we do, right? Collections, programs, and services. But I want to say that we have an opportunity now to start talking about our fourth, which is partnerships. There's that fourth component. It's becoming more and more a reality, both from the state level, which we've been given opportunities for those, such as the park pass and things, and then at local levels. And partnerships are between you know, individuals, but also organizations and public schools. We've, I think libraries and public schools, we've always seen ourselves as being having the same goals, but oftentimes not very easily coming together for the same objectives or or having ability with like taxpayer money to kind of share resources in a way that are more vital for communities. So I think the Student Connect card really offers an opportunity to look at this as a model for how library partnerships and initiatives can expand and grow. So um, I'm Tari Ryan. I'm um, the library manager for youth and outreach at the Mountain View Public Library. And um, we, our student connect card is, um, we have three schools. It's actually an e-card and um, our schools require a memorandum of um, understanding. They're for five years. And uh, we do allow students to also have a physical card, but our e-card does not allow checkouts for physical materials. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Nathan Brumley. Uh, as mentioned, I'm with the Livermore Public Library. Um, so our student success initiative um, took the form of our student one card. You'll probably hear all of us call our cards like different names up here. <laughs> um, but uh, we have an MOU with our school district. We have one school district in Livermore uh, with, and they have about 12, uh, 13, 12 schools. And um, currently, um, our card serves uh, middle through uh, high schools. Um, we've just been able to expand our card into elementary schools. We had a few challenges there, which we'll probably be talking about today. Um, it is a full service card, um, and parents opt out of the program at, the, at registration at the beginning of the year. Um, all of uh, the information from the, like, the students name, address, phone number, and parents' email address is shared with us via the school district. And that gets automatically loaded into our um, database when it's shared with us. We do that multiple times throughout the year um, to catch any like new students joining. And then throughout the year, we kind of like low-key dedupe, uh, go, go through and uh, remove those who already have cards with us. And that's, that's how it's been working. Uh, hi, I'm Mary Kapora. I'm um, from the Pleasanton Library right next door to Livermore. And um, pretty much everything he just said, no. um, <laughs> but actually almost everything that he said, uh, our school district also um, participates in the program through an MOU with our one school district. Um, it is a full service card with the exception of Link Plus materials. Um, the card serves um, high school, middle school, and then just this year we um, added elementary but also had some issues. So I would say half of elementary. It is also an opt-out um, program. Um, one difference is uh, people participate um, 
one time a year just during registration. We're, we're not getting records from the school district at any other time. So if um, someone opted out at the beginning, they have to wait until the next year before they can, they can um, be back into the program. Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren uh, from San Jose Public Library. Ours is a little bit more complex. Um, in the city of San Jose, we have 19 public school districts. We have almost 60 local education agencies like charters. We have private schools. Um, we have 20 partnerships across that, which we do MOUs with. Um, am I echoing? I'll sit back. There we go. I'm OK? Closer. OK. Uh, we serve almost 200 schools, almost 100,000 cards are issued every year. Um, each district does things differently with us, so we partner with them. Uh, some transfer data every month, some every quarter. Luckily, our access team is wonderful and accommodating, and so um, we just have an opportunity to partner with each school or each district differently. So Nathan, starting with you, has your library been able to measure the impact of student cards? This is a super good question. Um, and when, you, when we're talking about measuring, we might be talking about a few different things. I have measured how many students have cards. That's an easy one to measure. Um, but as far as like impacts go, that's a little more difficult. So we've been doing this program since about 2019, I want to say. Um, Maybe it's 2018, and um, I'm not sure that we have like good data from the school district that like you know students with these cards now are doing better in school. Um, we would love to be able to like point to that and say yes, that's happening. Um, so it, it's something we're working on. It, it's another thing too that we've talked to the school district also is um, part of our MOU was talking about um, keeping track of students who participate in our. Uh, summer reading program and kind of talking about data on how those students perform versus those who don't. Um, so we've talked a little bit about that. We're trying to make that work. I guess the answer is no, not yet. Um, uh, not in any like a way that we can report at least out to to like the community and to all of you. Um, but uh, the the numbers, if we look at circulation. Um, if we look at uh, how many students now have cards in the, in the community, we can say, yes, that's happening and that's good. Um, one thing that we started to do um, is part of the records that we receive, uh, we get like this code assigned to each student depending on which uh, school they attend. And so we can actually, uh, that goes into the, the student's record in our system under a custom field. and so. If I know the code, I can see, I can kind of tell which um, school that student goes to. And so through that, we're able to see like which schools are using our library the most, circulation numbers um, based on like, you know, where they are in the city and that kind of thing. So from that standpoint, it's been interesting to look at that data and try to like target and maybe reach out more to those schools. Yeah, I was. Agree. Oh, I thought they just cut me. <laughs> I don't have anything controversial to say. Uh, same thing, we don't really track the program um, uh, other than um, participation. Uh, so we know in September our, our uh, registration statistics that are generally somewhere around, you know, anywhere between 200 to 400 all of a sudden jumps to 7,000 something <laughs> in September. So. Um, but beyond that, we haven't really done any other tracking. You know, we're not looking to see um, our databases. How often are those? Um, you know, maybe you would want to know your your brain fuse. You know, how often is that being used with a student ID? But we we don't track any of that. It, we probably should. Yeah, we um, in San Jose, we we look at cards issued, we look at cards used. Um, since there are a plethora of districts, we can see who's using the, the library more often. Um, we do a little tracking through our teacher and educator newsletter that goes out every month, so who's opening it, where are they clicking, through constant contact. And then we also look at class visits. 
and virtual class visits. So we had one school district that was really engaged in the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic. Um, I will say our library card program was an unintended pandemic program. It launched in March of 2020. And um, we had no idea that we were going to be issuing digital cards through a, a pandemic and that we would be designing this entire program um, and bringing on so many schools with it. Um, but yeah, so we do track a little bit more of that. Um, and then we work with the districts um, to, to do outreach and partnerships. And so we're tracking how many times we go to the schools, how many times the schools come to us. And we, it, while it's not card usage, it is a different level of engagement um, around student library cards. And is that for all the elementary, middle, and high school? It's for a lot of them. Um, we have two, we have three districts that serve high school students and two of them have cards. And so um, there is, we're still working out the MOU portion of the, of the high school district. Can you speak for Mountain View? We've had limited ability to track impact. We'd like to be able to do that. A lot of it, um, it's been a compromise. Uh, one of the goals we've had is having a student ID number match the library card number so that the students know and it's it's ease ease of use for them but that's limited our ability to track i i, I wish we did have better numbers but i think we're we're alongside pleasanton and livermore with that ability at this juncture so um the next question for the panel has there been any negative or positive outcomes with implementing or having the card I'm thinking here budget impacts, general optics around the program, working with vendors, coming agreement with the school districts. This is a broad question for the panel. I can start, I guess, yeah. sure. I'm, I'm next in line, I'll do that. Yeah, we'll go down the line. Hi, um, so um, challenges I think for us have mostly been uh, just getting those elementary schoolers in on the program. Um, that, that was one of the, primary reasons really wanted to get into this in the beginning is to reach the younger ones too and make sure that they're getting cards. Um, the, the challenge there was just the way the school district um, issues student IDs. Um, so the way our program works is they use their actual student ID number and their student IDs and those student IDs have barcodes. And so essentially the way we've set it up, uh, those can serve just as uh, public library cards with us. Um, but a, for a lot of the elementary schools, they don't send their students home with their IDs. Those stay at home at school. And so um, an issue there for, for them was the cost. So they, they could have printed another um, student ID, um, but that would have been a pretty big cost on the school district. Um, thankfully to them, they've been such a great partner. They weren't asking us to pay anything for it. So uh, what we eventually got to, and this was this year, is they'd um, settle for essentially like student books in the classroom, which was a lot less uh, for them to print um, with barcodes and everything and pictures. And so then they'd be sending home those student IDs with their students that they can then start using in the libraries. And once that was figured out, that's, that's happened this year. And so that's when the elementary schoolers were added. So when we, um, so just this year, what well, we had been trying to add elementary um, for a couple of years. Uh, this year, we were able to add them. We got the permission to add them. Our elementary school students also do not, they're not issued um, physical cards. Only middle school and high school get those cards. But um, we're way more freewheeling than, I guess, Livermore. We just decided it's okay that they don't have actual physical cards and they can just tell us their student ID number most of the kids were relying on the idea that most of the kids know their ID number. That's how they get their lunch. You know, they, they have to know that number from kindergarten up. Um, so uh, I, I would say for us, um, the, the biggest challenge for us is working with the school district to, um, to finally get all the students added. Just the communication sometimes, um, you, you know, we're not all in the same building. I don't know all the people at the school district. People move around at the school district. We only do this once a year. So every year, you're, you're going maybe to a new set of people to say, hey, we're gonna do this again. Sometimes I kind of wonder, you know, do they even remember that we're doing this? You know, um, it's time to send me all this data. Um, 
So getting it, even though we have an MOU um, that states it's supposed to be done a very specific way, you know, when you're working with people, it doesn't always work out that way. So for instance, this year, <clears throat> adding on the elementary school students, um, in, in our registration process, there is a page that is full of all of these permissions, at like 30, 40 permission statements. As you go down, there's all these checkbox. Almost everything is already checked. So a parent would have to go and uncheck the box. This year, because elementary was new and I was working with new people again, the elementary school box was not checked. So parents would have to go and opt into it, even though our MOU says it should be an opt out. So that was something, it, you know, registration just happens at the beginning of the year and that's it. So now I have to wait until next year to make sure again, hey, remember this is supposed to be an opt out program. But other than that, there's, you know, I don't think there's a lot of negatives to kids, you know, more people having access to the library. Yeah, there are there are some challenges to the to the program. Um, I will. I, the budget is definitely one of them. I remembered to put um, the cards in our pocket. So these are just like business cards that are issued to all the students, but it's expensive. And so the budget uh, conversation has come up around marketing materials um, and lost cards. So they it's attached to their student ID number also with the majority of the districts. And so there's a space where they can write in their, um, their student ID and just reminds them of how to use their card. I think one other challenge is the staff turnover um, is at districts and at the library, um, you know, and in one district I've worked, you know, the program's only been around for as long as the pandemic and I've worked with four different people. And so it's constantly having to go back and build that relationship and remind them who I am and, and why this is important and then pull my boss in and pull their boss in. And so I think that that's definitely um, an issue to consider is that that it's an ongoing relationship and conversation with the district that um, data transfer happens once a month or every quarter, um, but then you want them to use the card, you know, so now you have it and now what? Um, so that's the, that can be um, a good challenge to have. So I can speak to um, budgetary impacts in Mountain View. We saw an increase in um, the Hoopla and Overdrive, the Libby, and we did see an increase in usage of popular <laughs> titles. And we've had to budget more money to um, what we had originally thought for ebooks and audiobooks, especially starting with the pandemic. I think it was hard for us to understand if. It's anecdotal, but we do think it is because of the, our, our student connect card. So we're, um, we wish we had more data around that, but um, that, that has been a budgetary impact in terms of database. Has anyone else had that, had seen that or? We've seen an increase in SORA, especially since some of our school districts rescheduled. Um, so we've seen that uptick, absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know, and, and it's funny that we're talking about this because I always think of it as like there's no budgetary impact, right? There's no, we're not issuing cards like that. Um, I didn't think of it in that terms of, oh, yeah, our, our database usage might be up, but we're, but we're not tracking it, so I don't know. Right. I, would, I would also just add that I think a lot of our databases that we're paying attention to aren't a cost per circ model, so for us, it's just a matter of like, yay, our numbers are going up. These, this is all good, a good impact rather than, yeah, something to be worried about. So with that, what recommendations would you make to libraries considering implementing a student card program? I'll go first again. All right, so um, I, I would say that uh, I have a bunch of advice, I guess, but um, I guess I would say you don't need to start with everything. Like, it doesn't even have to be a whole school. Um, the way we started our program was we did all the freshmen at, at the high schools in our city. And then we did the whole high school. And then we did all the middle school the following year. And so I guess continuing in that trend, we, we continued to grow it into elementary school. Um, from here, I would love to add all the staff. I would love to add uh, the independent schools in the city. So it's just kind of like, uh, 
pick how far you want to go your, your, when you're starting out and then know that you can expand that as you go on and learn and all that good stuff. Another thing I would say too is that um, this probably isn't your first conversation with your school district, hopefully. Um, so I, I kind of liken it to like, you wouldn't go up to a stranger and ask for their child's uh, in, uh, contact information, right? So it's like, that's kind of how some of them might feel um, about this too. Um, so it, there's a lot of like relationship building that goes on into starting a program uh, with your school district like this. Yeah, the R word. Um, so um, probably building that, um, asking your school district, like setting up meetings with key stakeholders there and just talking about things like, so some of the things that I started doing when I was in charge of youth services with our library was setting up meetings with our, our superintendent and asking what challenges they're facing, but also bringing some ideas to them. Um, so like one of the things that came out of that was I found out that they needed more support with our, with the Spanish chapter books. And so our libraries started collecting more Spanish chapter books to support like bilingual programs that they were offering. Um, so it's like proving to them, hey, we're also here to give something back to you. You're not, we're not just asking you to take something from us. Another thing might be to like see if your school district has a community engagement department. And so those are like some of your best partners. Um, I found that less turnover happens in that uh, group than some of the other like actual school sites. So um, making connections in the, with the school district that way has been very, very helpful. And then also seeing if your school districts have like meetings where district staff meet with parents and teachers association volunteers and other like principals. Um, our school district district has a great meeting that happens monthly. Um, it's it's got all the PTA presidents in there. Uh, it's got key people from the school district. Um, and uh, I just invited myself to it and just haven't left. And now they kind of like set out a name card for me and everything at each one. So um, it, just, uh, I, yeah, it, for me, it's, it's just super important to build that relationship and build those partnerships. And when they ask for something, even if you don't really want to do it, you just try to accommodate that because you know they'll do the same for you. Um, so that's my advice there. Yeah, I wasn't part of the implementation of our plan, so I can't really speak to um, how it was built from the beginning. But what I would say from taking it over, um, make it as easy as possible for kids to join or for the parents to um, put their kids in the program. Originally, our MOU was written. Um, there was no um, discussion of whether it would be this opt-in or opt-out. Um, we found that if parents had to physically go and tick the little box, again, because if you could see this, this page of permissions, it's really long. And as a parent, I'm not reading all that stuff. Like, if it's not checked, then I probably don't want it, right? So to, depending on how your school district chooses to um, implement this, that would be my big piece of advice is to try and get that opt out written into your MOU so that the little box is ticked if that's how your school does um, does the program through the registration. I agree with everything that they all have said about about it and and to just get started right like to get to a thousand you have to get to one first and um, and however that looks for you if it's having a conversation or um, having a director to superintendent conversation or you know school to branch um, but it starts the snowball and to build the momentum around it and making it easy you know I find um, because I manage the MOU and the contracts and administration process I find that to be very daunting for a lot of people so they don't need to know about that I'll just let you know in the MOU it's done right because the fun part happens when you get to use your card and you get to do the school outreach and you get to do all of that and that's what librarians are excited about and teachers are excited about and so pulling back those hard processes or making it easier for your system to work together I think is 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 the ultimate goal and so just getting started I, I'll also add that that we have digital cards for 18 of the 20 partnerships that we have attached to their student IDs is so much easier for people to know and remember if that's a possibility and it takes a little bit more work on the front end it's totally worth it um, 
I still remember my student ID number. It's 709-902. Like, it, it, it will help students. It will help families. Um, I think that that's a, an important piece that, um, that helps the school community also uh, begin to have better conversations with them about libraries. I would add that it takes a while to come to an MOU sometimes. We, um, in our case, we had a private school we were working with. We didn't come to an agreement the first year, but we stuck with it. And this year we were able to find a way and a path to create an MOU for the private school. So sometimes the MOU can fail, but it's still worth going back to reconsider how you can make that partnership happen. And now it's a worthwhile program, but it can take a while. So. has fantastic um, drafts and templates and MOUs that we leveraged heavily at the beginning of our program. It was, it was incredibly helpful. So the next question is, you've partnered with the schools. Can you provide any examples of some stories or anecdotes or ideas for programs or initiatives within the schools around the student card? Can I go first on that? Absolutely. Um, we had a fantastic librarian right at the beginning of the program that did a Q&A with one of our principals. And they posted it on, it's Rebecca, um, and they posted it on YouTube and um, we shared it widely about, because, you know, once the kids have cards, uh, now the technical assistance comes in and um, not everybody knows about libraries and that they're free and uh, what happens at a library. And often people are scared to come in and use the card and, and take away a material. Um, and the Q&A was a, a great way to do that. So. Um, so that was one really successful example during the pandemic that happened. Um, and, and we're looking now over the next year or two, one of our goals and objectives is to um, get students back in the library and help them with the technical assistance of the cards. We've got them the cards. We have the districts. We, you know, everybody's together on that. And now we want them to know how to use the card. And, and that's our goal. And so for school engagement, it's, um, calling the schools, it's um, it, taking the meetings um, with the districts uh, all the time, right? Because um, you might not want to sit on a Zoom call all day with teachers, but that's what's really important. And so getting kids back in the library, class visits, um, having librarians and assistants and everybody call the schools, even if it's, you know, the front desk and saying like, can we come to your school? Like. We'll bring our bag of goodies um, and providing technical assistance for the cards. So I, I think it's just that constant um, help that we've that we've been doing. Um, but anyway, and I and I say I say yes to to most of it, right? Like if a librarian comes to me um, and says I want to do this, it's like, yep. Yeah, how can we do that? Like how can we um, engage with our students and our families? Um, let's prototype it or let's start small. Um, do one event and see if it, it works here. Could it work somewhere else? So I think giving everything a try has, has been a successful engagement strategy with schools. We haven't really had uh, the, the school district doesn't do a whole lot of promoting this program uh, that I'm aware of. We, um, we have... Uh, there's an activities guide. So our library is part of our um, recreation department as well. So in our library, um, our library and recreation activities guide that comes out every quarter, I always make sure that the quarter just before school registration, since that's the only time they have to, to opt into the program, um, that there's some advertisement in there so that parents understand if they are looking at those million um, permission statements, this is what it's about. It's not necessarily as clear in the registration um, permission page what it is. It's, it's just saying you're giving permission for all this information to go to the library. Well, why? Well, because this is great. They're going to be able to use, if they forget their library card, it doesn't matter if they have their school ID. You know, if they've come from school straight to the library and, they, and their parent keeps their card with them, it doesn't matter. You have your school ID. You can, you can access everything you need that way. So that's been mostly how we, um, we've been trying to engage. Yeah, it's, uh, I think there's more we could probably be doing. 
Um, but uh, for for now, especially, I mean, you all know this, the pandemic messed up everything. Uh, but um, visiting classrooms, um, we did create a bunch of flyers for uh, promoting the program and distributing that to the different um media centers on campuses. We talked to teachers and offered to come into classes. One of the neat things that we started that has now not continued, but we'd like to start continuing it again, um, was we um, went to um, like freshmen's kind of like, you're welcome to high school um, initiation. Uh, they have, they've got a class at um, our school district. I'm forgetting the name of it, obviously. Uh, yes, it, it's, it is, is an orientation, but they, ha they call it something special. So anyway, uh, that, they invited us to that. And um, uh, so we, we did, and we, we talked about the library card and all that good stuff. Um, so that's something hopefully we'll be able to bring back. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier, meeting with the, the superintendent or your uh, principals, is you, you start to hear about things that um, their community or parents are asking from school districts that they feel like is kind of like outside their zone or they don't have the bandwidth to take that on. One of those uh, for us was most recently um, uh, classes on how to fill out the FAFSA. And so because of that, you know, we are, we're hearing what they need. And so we kind of uh, look at what we can do and uh, partner with them to both put that on and for them to then send parents to us. So uh, we're working on putting that together Otherwise, it's uh, just continuing to offer site visits. Um, we, we go to their carnivals when we can and talk up the card there. And um, sometimes we'll offer special like science classes um, or activities after school, but it, it'll depend on what we're able to actually provide and with staffing and all that, but yeah. A lot of the students in our school districts go to Boys and Girls Club or YMCA, and so we've reached out to them also because they're doing their homework there after school, they're um, having tutors and things like that, and so we've provided um, training and resources to those organizations so that when the students with library cards are at their locations, they um, can use our resources. We did that with our Parks and Rec Department. Um, a lot of students during the pandemic were at our community centers going to school. And so we would um, help the park staff learn how to use our databases and our resources also because um, schools are one pathway, but knowing that there are 100,000 students in San Jose that have library cards, um, they're also out in the world doing other things. They're only in school 20% of their time, and so where can we get the other adults to know that they have cards? Um, so outreach with Boys and Girls Club and YMCA has been um, one pathway and workaround to let them know that they have the cards. For Mountain View, we had a lot of success um, reaching out to uh, the programs that offer, um, that are for English language learners and for students who are entering um, college the first time their parents hadn't gone to college. I can't remember the name of the program, but I think it's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I can't remember the name of the program, but um, I know all high schools have this, and we were able to one-on-one -on -one work with them, and we kind of offered an embedded librarianship program throughout the school year. It was a strong partnership. They reached out to us. We provided um, information beyond um, just the databases to uh, extra resume support and um, reading lists. So that was very successful for us, but that was a very a microcosm of what we think we could have been doing. I think our difficulty in Mountain View and probably for every library is also staffing. We can have a lot of brilliant, great ideas. But we've also found that just a one-time experience isn't as um, as impactful as continuing and having those relationships with the teachers and with um, other faculty members so that we can like continually be present. So that's been something that's been a challenge for us. Are there any barriers in your opinions that may exist to furtherance of the program at a state or a national level? Perspectives on that? I was thinking more along the lines of um, 
The only barrier that I could see to this, because again, I, I can't see any negatives to more people having more access to the library, but there is this data sharing component of this. And um, some people are just nervous about that in general. And now as we've seen more recently, there is this prejudice against libraries. So I could see in some places, you know, oh, no, I would never share my child's data with the library, you know, um, which is unfortunate, but um, that would be one of the few barriers that I would see. In my notes, I have data. Um, I think that's been a big conversation is um, sharing data privacy, uh, how we share data, secured files with passwords, um, San Jose went an extra step to join the California Student Privacy Alliance. So we're a registered vendor in the state, um, you know, just calling out that we value student privacy. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that is just a barrier of the program is when you're sharing large amounts of data and personal identifiable information. But does, don't, don't let that stop you. That's right. It's um. And yeah, you raise excellent points about why, especially right now, um, there might be some pushback. Um, but I think the biggest challenge here is just people not knowing about it um, and uh, figuring out how to get the word out about like, hey, every, every kid in Livermore or every kid in our state has a library card. I mean, um, uh, one, getting the word out about that. And then two, uh, we just come back to why it's so important and why it's important what we do and offer and our, our amazing services. So I think it at that point just becomes a marketing problem for us to figure out. So just one last question and then we'll take some questions. Are there any takeaways we can learn about who student cards work and their broader applications? For one, I'm thinking here, um, Brooklyn Public Library just opened the Books Unbanned program. I don't know if people are aware of that, but that's pretty spectacular for all high school students in the nation, basically. So that's something our, you know, community residents automatically receiving cards when they become part of a community. I mean, just other civic or educational or institutional partnerships where this could grow. Any comments on that before? I mean, wouldn't it be great if it was issued at birth? I mean, right there in the hospital, right? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, um, but uh, I mean specifically, why not organizations we're already already always partnering with, like um, or everybody who comes and works for your cities or counties. Um, I mean that that to me seems like such an easy way to expand it right there. Um, and then like like I said earlier, everybody in the school district, uh, we have a separate parks department. Everybody in the parks district, um, these are our regular partners. And then like I don't know, reaching out to businesses. Uh, we've got large labs in our city. There's large businesses like uh, uh, the industrial companies. It could be a perk of moving or working in your city. Uh, there's a lot of places that this could go. Yeah, I mean, any place that um, already uses a card in some way. So you were talking about, you know, like the local businesses, any large company, you know, if there was some way to um, share data with them, right, and then their badge becomes their library card. Denver does something like that where you have your library card, your parks pass, and your transit all on one. I've always wanted to do that. Um, that seems really complex. And then, uh, but don't let that stop you. Um, and then I think about working with teachers and the curriculum and knowing ahead of time what they're teaching and if there's a way that, that um, I've never been able to do this, so if you know how, let me know. It, get in front of the collections of like, um, let's make this an everyday collection copy so that, that the whole school could read a book at the same time. Um, one of our school districts came to us and was like, let's do a movie night on a book and have everyone read the book and then we'll have them come to the school and we'll you know, do a movie night based on the book. And that would be great, but like, how do I get a copy of whatever that popular book is? Like the, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to butcher the name of the popular book that the kids are reading, but that, so I, I think that there's like ways to build on those partnerships, um, whether it's like a, a go card in the city or like your, your, your gym pass, um, but then also just like 
making our books more available for everybody to have a copy of the book during the curriculum dur during the month that they're supposed to be reading that book and not call the wild like a real good book like not the call the wild is a bad book i don't i, I don't want to say that it's a great book but i think it's always available but i think that maybe seventh graders are reading something different now and if there's a way for our libraries and our collections to reflect local curriculum i know that's a real big challenge so Call the wild now. <laughs> Sorry. So, any questions from the audience? I let Chris um, navigate over. Hi. Um, I come from the data side of things. So, when you're setting these things up, um, what are the kids, the students using for passwords? For example, in my school, the school districts, Sonoma County, we have 42 districts varying size. We have uh, 50 or 60,000. Uh, their student number is their email address. And we have used the birth year up till now as the password for a PIN, right? Except for an elementary school kid who I kind of want to hire in the future, figure that out and he was able to go into other people's accounts and make notes of their addresses, which has caused some serious uh, privacy related issues amongst parents in the, the address or uh, district. And so we're looking at different ways to create passwords that the students will remember, which again was why we went with birth year first. So I'm wondering what you all have done with that. Sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, we, uh, we use student IDs as their barcode number, and then the password we actually leave blank in our system. And so that actually prompts them to create a PIN or password when they first log in. Yeah, we, were, um, we use a PIN number, so it's four digits. Um, originally, when we started, um, just like Livermore did with just the freshmen, it was their graduation year. Um, and then uh, every year since, so, so then we continued on with that when the next year when it was high school, now that we have um, more grade levels, um, it's usually just the end of the school year. So in, in this year, the pin would be 2023, but we do encourage, you know, in the flyer that we have about this, you know, you should change your pin, but that's what we use. We do birthdays, um, like June 1st would be 0601. And then uh, we do encourage them to change it. How many of them change it? For Mountain View, we use the last four digits of the student ID number. So. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. is it on? Questions over here? Let's switch Oh, sorry. Hi. Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was a. Uh, district librarian for a while, and I just had a question for um, how robust the staffing is for your public schools with um, school librarians. We have quite, like every school here in San Francisco has one, but I know that the ratio statewide is, is not so great. So I was just sort of curious about surrounding um, cities and, and do you work those partnerships to roll those cards out? We work with one of our district librarians to be posted as our contact person. Um, a lot of our schools in San Jose have library media specialists um, about, we're actually doing more of a landscape analysis of where, which schools and which districts um, have what now, post pandemic. Um, but we do try our best to work with them, but we do see that it's, you know, far, like it's, it's dwindling, um, the schools having a librarian. Some districts have made a choice not to have them. Mm. Um, uh, and others have no librarians but the media specialists, so. Yeah, that's the same in Pleasanton. There's one at least library media specialist for each site. I don't actually work with the, um, with any of the, li the district librarian um, staff. It's, um, has to do with the um, head of that particular curriculum. So we have the head of um, elementary curriculum middle school, high school. So you work with them um, for permission in the program and then everything else is with their IT department. Mm -hmm. So uh, thankfully at Livermore, we do have uh, media specialists at all of the sites too. Um, 
and we actually uh, attend their regular meetings. Uh, we send a representative from our library too, and so we kind of partner. And they they they're always super great about helping us promote library services and stuff like that that we offer. So, yeah. Well, that concludes our time. Um, Can we do uh, one more at lightning speed? <laughs> Um, if I heard you guys correctly, you said that parents will opt out of the library car program at the beginning of the school year. Do you have any examples of why? So they have the opportunity to do that, but we haven't had any parents do that in our system. We had some concerns about um, age appropriateness and on occasion also sharing of student data. how many parents have opted out, and, and I don't know why. It, in our case, there was, um, like I said, sort of like a glitch where the box wasn't ticked like it was supposed to. So, um, but otherwise, I, I don't have any um, data on why parents are not participating. I would only add to what Matthew um, is, it reasons are is trust. We have some families who, um, still don't understand the library and, and it's a government and so there's a somewhat of a lack of trust there. All right. All right, thank you so much to our panelists.